Hey, it's Kev from Blender Binge. Here are 20 modifiers that I've detailed in other videos but decided to cram together for your viewing pleasure. I use simple examples in this video, but we'll link to other better examples where applicable. This is not an end-all, be-all, use-every-feature video of every modifier, but more of an overview and it'll hopefully spark ideas. Do you want ideas? Let's go. The first is the array modifier. Here's how you use it. Select the thing you want to make into an array, in my case, the soon to be defaulted cube, which are copies. You'll see in a second. Go to Modifiers and add the array. It looks like it extended the cube into a default rectangle thing. What it's doing is making a copy of it and offsetting it. If you look at the relative offset count, you can add different numbers to the different slots and it will offset it on different axes. The top is X, middle is Y, and bottom is Z. If you add in one to all of them, it offsets them in that amount in each direction. If you change the count to three, you get three. If you offset by one, in just the Y and Z axis, you get stairs going up in the Y direction. If you increase the count by more, you get more stairs. Pretty simple, right? One cool trick is to use a curve to control the array. Here's a simple example with our stairs. Add in a Bezier curve, scale it by hitting S and drag, then rotate it by hitting R and dragging. Now, change fit type to fit curve and curve to Bezier curve. That's the curve we just created. If you select the curve now and hit tab to go into edit mode, you can select one of the points of the curve and drag. You'll see your count going up and down. If you start with a lower count, you'll have more control. This is more finesse than anything, so you kind of got to get in and play with it. Here's the array with constant offset. It's going by grid units now instead of object bounding box size like relative did. If you turn on merge and play with the distance variable, you can get some fun effects. The effect depends on the offset value on what merges. If you turn on first, last, looky what happens. So much fun, so much fun. Stretch out your curve and ooh. I used an array in this video as one modifier in a small chain to create lots of skulls. Whatever. Next up, bevel. Select the soon to be destructed cube and choose bevel from the modifier menu. It adds edges to your object. If you play with the offset, it makes the bevel larger or smaller. Simple, right? If you choose only vertices, it works on just points. Up the segments and you get rounded edges. Good for some hard surface type stuff. Turn off clamp overlap and see why you shouldn't do that. Then turn it back on and make everything in the world right again. Here's a useful tip. Go to materials and make another material in the slot by hitting the plus. Then hit new, change both colors. I chose red and green, but you can choose whatever you want. Now go back to the bevel modifier panel and in Material, change from negative 1 to, wait, turn on Rendered View. Yeah, there we go. It's the first material. Now change Material to anything greater than 0. In this case, 1, because I have one other material in there. Look, the beveled areas are a different color. How about that? Change to Angle and play around. It can control the bevel by angles. In this case, I only have 90 degree angles, so it will only work on those. If I go past 90 degrees, the bevel effect is gone. Useful in some situations, I'd reckon. Watch what happens if I hit tab for edit mode, control R for loop cut and slide, and add in another point here. Let's move that down and look. Changing the angles on some edges lose the bevel effect while others keep it based on the input degrees. Interesting. Play with grid fill and cut off and check those corners, Marines. Stay frosty. If you check custom profile, like y'all probably know about this already, but it's really fun so I'm adding it in here. Turn it on and click and drag on the line and watch your edges conform to the curve in this little window. Turn up the segments and ooh. It's neat and fun and you'll lose sleep here. Strong for architectural stuff like crown moldings and things. There are other things you can do with bevel, but that's enough for now. Next! Ooh, Boolean. This is a fun one that I did a video on last year or something like that. The link is up there somewhere. Start with two cubes, make one offset like this, choose the bottom one and go to modifiers, add Boolean. Under Object, choose the second cube and you'll see it doing something. In this case, it's cutting into the first cube with the shape of the second cube. If I go to wireframe mode, you can see it better. Change from Difference Mode to Intersect Mode and it only keeps the part of the first cube that falls inside the second cube. Change to Union and they merge together. It's simple, right? This is the basis behind really awesome add-ons like Box Cutter and Hard Ops. Let's use a more fun example. Here's a cube with Suzanne, the monkey head. Why Suzanne? I don't know. Watch the end of Mall Rats or Chasing Amy or listen to Weezer or something. If we select Suzanne and add a Boolean modifier to her beautiful head, then choose our cube. We can 
turn on wireframe. We can see that it's doing bad, bad things. Bad, don't do that. Let me change the shading to use Eevee and you can see what's happening better. See, she's discombobulating. This is just with the standard add of Boolean. I didn't change anything in the modifier yet. You can animate this thing to make things appear and disappear. If I change the modifier to intersect, you can only make things inside the cube appear. Pretty cool. Do the same thing with a sphere and it gets spherical cuts. Build. The build modifier is cool for these types of effects. I did a video on it. Link is up there. Select your object, add the build modifier, roll the start frame backward and watch it appear. Check reverse and reverse it. Set the length and it operates based on time. Hit random and the effect is even more interesting. Play with the length and the effect happens faster or slower. Keyframe it. Play with it. It's fun. Get in there. Decimate. This cuts the number of faces in your object down. Here's a cool use. Make a cylinder. Hit tab for edit mode. Then control R for loop cut and slide. Roll your mouse scroll wheel and add like this many cuts. Hit enter. Hit tab again to go back to object mode. Select your cylinder. Add the decimate modifier, then check unsubdivide and turn up the iterations. Now you have a cool wave-like pattern. Add a wireframe modifier to it and you get this. Useful, I think. Book break, free ebook in the description if you want. Just saying. Edge. Use this to set edges of a certain angle to stay sharp when you smooth normals. With this modifier on a torus, if I hit shade smooth, check edge angle and sharp edges and play with the angle. You can cusp normals this way and get different looks to your object. Do it on a subdivided Suzanne and it starts to make sense. It's useful for certain hard edge things. See that? Next up, mirror. I'll start off mirror by saying this is really useful if you're modeling something and you want to model two halves and you cut one in half and then you use mirror and mirror it and the second half will just go along with the first half. But I'm going to show you some other cool stuff with this. Select the cube, go to modifier and add mirror. If your object's in the center, you won't see anything happen. If you move the object away from center, then click on Options, Origins, and move the pivot point of the object back to the center, then turn off Origins, you'll see the effect happen. It mirrors your object from its origin point. A good trick to control mirroring on objects is to use another object to control the mirror effect. Create an empty, then use the modifier properties for the cube under Mirror Object. Choose the empty, and now you have a control. If you choose X, Y, and Z under Axis, then rotate the empty, you can get all kinds of interesting mirroring effects. If you turn on Merge, move the empty so they come together more, then add in a subdivision modifier, you can get really trippy metaball-like effects. Try it. Make the subdivision higher and see what happens. This happens. Surprise. Remesh. Remesh is the Minecraft modifier. Watch. Take Suzanne, add a remesh modifier, and you get something that looks like an orc from World of Warcraft or something. Play with the Oct Tree Depth, and you get Destruction. Could be useful. Change the mode to Blocks, and you get Minecraft. If you have the Ant Landscape add-on installed, you can create a simple terrain. Add the Remesh modifier to it. Change mode to Blocks, and there you go, Minecraft. Play with the Oct Tree Depth, and you get more or less of it. Change mode to Smooth, and you can animate it and do reveal-type stuff if you want. Screw is next. Take a cube, add a screw modifier, and you get this. It sucks, I know, but just wait before you facepalm, tell me I suck in the comments, thumbs down the video, and move on to hurt others with your super superiority. If you play with the angle, it just makes the object rotate around itself. Change the axis, and now it does it differently. But, if you change the screw value, you get the effect you're looking for. Play with the steps, and make it greater or lesser. Cool trick now. Add in an empty, then select your cube, go back to the modifier, and under axis, choose empty. Now, if you move the empty around, it moves the effect. Play with the angle, and you can get all kinds of cool things going. Turn up the iterations and make it go all the way up to the up. Change the axis, and you get an old phone cord. Next up, skin. Select your cube, add a skin modifier, and watch greatness unfold before your very eyes. This modifier basically draws geometry around points. Play with branch smoothness and get tighter results. Turn on Smooth Shading and see this. Click Create Armature, and it draws a bone system inside your object. Here's where it gets fun. Hit Tab and select all the points. Then go to Vertex, Merge Vertices, and choose At Center. Now you have a point and a control. Move this around and see what happens. This happens. The cool thing happens when you choose the control point, then go to Extrude, and extrude this thing around. 
Move extrude, move extrude, move extrude, and you get a worm or a cable. Click armature on the modifier, and you get a skeleton inside your object. Now you can animate this thing. Next up, solidify. Take Suzanne, hit tab, and go into edit. Select half of her and delete. Hit tab and go back into object mode and add a solidify modifier. Play with the thickness and watch Suzanne thicken. Play with the clamp value and watch only part of her thicken based on the thickness value and size, etc. Try this. Select some points in edit mode, hit Control G for group, then go back into object mode. Go to the modifier and under angle clamp, this isn't labeled for some reason, choose the group we just made. Now only that area gets solidified. Okay, get rid of the group thing and change the mode to complex. Now we have more options we can play with. Fun. Here's something useful. Choose only rim. Now, only the boundary areas get the effect. This is cool cross-section stuff. Play with the thickness here and you can control the effect. Here's something useful. Make two materials in the material menu. I'm going with green and red again because Christmas is such a fond memory these days. Now, turn on shaded mode and you'll see half Suzanne is green. Back in the modifier for solidify, change the material to one and you get two materials on this. The solidified areas get another material. Change the rim too and switch it up. Subdivide is next. Select your cube and add a subdivision surface modifier. Your cube changes to a round thing. It's adding more geometry here, and if you go with Catmull Clark, it rounds it out. Simple holds the topology. If you add more divisions to the viewport, it gets more dense. You also need to match that in the render area too, or when you render, it'll look different. If you hit tab and move a point around, you can see that the cube is now a proxy cage for the subdivision surface. One point can move many other vertices. If you grab a face and hit extrude, you can model with this stuff and it gives you a smooth approximation of whatever you box model. This is an old school modeling technique. Play with it if you've never done this before. It's fun and there are many old animation movies that were modeled and rendered partly using this stuff. Triangulate is next. This modifier takes quads and breaks them up into triangles. This is what renderers render. It has some uses, but modern engines do much of this for you. This used to be awesome for game engines that used to be very sensitive to poly counts. It's still there, but way more forgiving. Now we'll look at wireframe. Take your cube and add a wireframe modifier to it. It takes the edges and draws in a wireframe mesh. Thickness controls the depth of the effect. Even thickness keeps it even, and relative goes by density. I have them both checked here, but it's usually one or the other. If you uncheck replace original, it keeps the original geometry in there, filling it in. If you add a subdivision modifier after this one in the stack, you can start doing really interesting things. Move the subdivision surface up before the wireframe and you can control how dense the effect is by controlling the amount of subdivisions. If you sandwich the wireframe modifier between two subdivision surface modifiers, you can smooth out the effect like this. Go inside the sphere and ooh. If you create two materials as we've done in many of these sections already, I'll do blue and magenta here, and we go back to the wireframe modifier and uncheck replace original, we get the fill in. Then we switch material offset to one and turn on shaded view and cool. We now get two shaders on this thing. You can use any shaders you want here and make this thing really, really cool looking like combining like flesh and metal and stuff and get like Terminator. It's awesome. Play around, get some interesting crap. Now we have weld. This one is interesting sort of. Take Suzanne for instance, select her and add the weld modifier. Then hit tab, go into edit mode, select some points like this, hit control G to assign a new group to the points we selected. In the weld modifier settings, select the group we just made in the vertex group window. And now if you play with distance, you can weld the points in that group. You can also play with the distance and get some useless effects, whatever. Here's the great one for those who have stuck around. We really don't care about those who didn't, right? The shrink wrap modifier. This one is awesome. I'm here with Suzanne and a grid beneath her. If I add a shrink wrap modifier to the grid and choose Suzanne as the target, the modifier takes the grid and wraps it to Suzanne. If you move Suzanne around, the effect and placement changes. So what? That's lame, you say. Well, watch this then. Change mode from nearest surface point to project. Now move Suzanne around. Huh? You like that? Change negative to positive. Now move Suzanne. Nice. Add a subdivision surface modifier to the grid and it looks better. Hide Suzanne and you get that face coming out of a wall effect from like every horror movie and everything except like Sesame Street. Look what Call Faces does. Now you've seen it. Yay. Change the project method 
to above surface and play. Change back to on surface, move Suzanne around, play with the limit, and change the effect. Make the surface look like it's grabbing Suzanne and swallowing her. Glad you stuck around yet? Good. Good. Because here's how you use Lattice. Take Suzanne here and go to Add Lattice. This looks like an empty cube. Scale it up and make it go around Suzanne. A new green lattice icon appears on the right sidebar. Go there. Here you can add divisions to the lattice through resolution settings. I'm adding some. Then to use it, select Suzanne and add in a lattice modifier. Next, go to the object area and choose lattice. That's the lattice you added to the scene before. Select the lattice, hit tab and go into edit mode and move a point around. It deforms the geometry. More divisions in the lattice refine the influence area of the lattice. This lets you get pretty targeted on what you want to deform. The more subdivisions on Suzanne and the more subdivisions on the lattice, the more refined your deformation is going to be. It's that simple. Try it, you'll see. Wave is up next. This modifier deforms geometry in a wave pattern. Create a grid, then add a wave modifier to it. Hit play and watch what happens. Underwhelmed? Sure. Add in a subdivision surface modifier and move it with the little arrow above the wave modifier. Now hit play. Much different. You can control the origin in an interactive and animatable way by adding in an empty, then going back to the modifier control panel for wave and change start position to empty. Now if you move your empty around, the origin of the effect changes with it. Keyframe it moving around and you get a weird animation. Play with the narrowness, width, speed, and height to understand them intuitively. There's really no substitute for getting in there and playing with it. Cyclic makes it cycle. Turn cyclic off and it's one and done. Life controls how long the wave lasts. Damping is how much time until the energy dissipates and fall off is how long the wave goes out from the origin before it dissipates. Here's the effect on some cool geometry I created using the array modifier you saw before on a bunch of cubes. I just hit apply on it to freeze the modifier's effect. You can always hit apply on modifiers to lock in their effect, but when you do, you lose the ability to go back and tweak it, so be careful with that. Look at that. Add some glow and ooh, ah. Displace. This one is all over the tutorial verse, so I won't spend long on it. Take any object. I'll use a sphere here. Add a displace modifier to it and it blows up a little. Hit new, then hit the little button on the right to go to the texture tab. See the menu change? Now choose a type from the drop down list. I'll use clouds. It takes each vertex and pushes it based on the texture you choose. White moves it out, black does nothing. The strength settings make it more or less powerful. Under texture coordinates, global makes the effect scene-wide. When you move your object, it swims through the texture, changing it as it moves. Local moves with it, locking the displacement to the object. Adding a subdivision surface in combination with a displace modifier can smooth the effect and make it look better. This is great for rocks, asteroids, blobby things, etc, etc. Each texture has its own settings, so get in there and play around. You might find some interesting things. Lastly, adding subdivision before the displacement gives you a much tighter control. You really see the texture displacement come through. And I've saved the best for last, for those who stuck around. Ocean. For this modifier, you can create a plane, or even in this case, it works on the sphere. Select it and add the ocean modifier. It turns into an ocean. The resolution will give it some more geometry to work with. Then, choppiness will make the waves crest. Don't go overboard with this number, though. To animate it, simply set keyframes on the time attribute. This is the trick that everybody usually asks for. Right-click at frame 1 on your timeline and set a keyframe with the value 1. Then, go to your last frame, keyframe it with a value of 2, then hit play on the timeline. There, you have an animated ocean. The value for time will make it go faster or slower. The only real way to learn to work with this is to play with it. It's a great modifier and you can make convincing non-splashing water with it. It goes deep and really deserves its own video series. If you like this video, I recommend you get the free book in the description of this video. It's full of useful tips on finding your way in 3D, useful sites and resources, and a whole lot more. Also, check out Blender Nest Podcast. You'll love it. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, and stay healthy, my friends.